Hi, I'm Tom Collier. I'm with Nilfisk Advance. I'm a senior service engineer. I'm here today to show you how to install your RPM sensor for the RS1300. Today you're going to need a couple different things to do this operation. A 17 millimeter combination wrench, a stubby 17 millimeter combination wrench, or if you're very gentle and you have nothing else available to you, you might be able to get this job done with a stubby or a standard 11 16 combination wrench. Before we get started here, I want to make sure that we've gotten our keys out of our ignition for safety's sake. We don't want anybody starting the engine up while our hands are down by the engine. We'll put them in a safe location where somebody's not going to start the engine. I'm going to show you the area that we're going to be working in today. I already have the hopper raised for uh, our ability to take a look down at the area that we're going to be working and I have the engine cover removed. Down in this area here, I've got a light shining on the uh, location that has the RPM sensor. And what I'm going to do is just behind the front wheel, I'm going to access that RPM sensor. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to remove the two jam nuts on the top of the RPM sensor that currently are installed. Okay, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to loosen the top jam nut. Make sure you only engage the top nut. We'll loosen that up. We're going to spin the top jam nut up a tad bit, get it out of our way. The bottom jam nut I expect to be a tad bit tighter, so I'm going to use a standard combination wrench down there on the bottom nut. We'll loosen that up. Now we're going to grab our stubby wrench, get it up out of the way a little bit. At this point in time, you're going to find that this, the sensor should be loose. I'm going to follow my way up the sensor's harness a little bit here, and if you can see, there's a single clip on the top of the harness. If you pull up on the clip with one finger, grab the harness with your two fingers on the bottom, you should be able to disengage the clip. Now your, now your RPM sensor is disengaged from the engine. Now sometimes the RPM sensor might be a little bit tight and she doesn't want to disengage from the block. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a adjustable pliers. I'm going to very gently grab the upper threads on the RPM sensor here just to get it to start walking out of the block. Now you don't want to use a wrench when you adjust when you install the adjustable pliers when you install the sensor because you're going to mar the sensor up a little bit when you're doing so. And as you can see, the sensor is quite tight. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of threads engaged into the bell housing where this is installed. When we install the harness, we're going to be a bit more careful about making sure that the wiring doesn't get wrapped up around anything. And we want to keep moving the wire harness around as we dis disengage the sensor. Now that we got to the point where it's finger tight, we'll move the harness around it. And the sensor's out. I'm going to lock these two nuts together real careful so that once we get it inside the engine area, just gently tug them, tighten them down. You can put one wrench over the top of the lock nuts, bring it down into the surface of the block gently if I need any assistance that I'm not going to be able to do with my finger. Again, you want to be considerate of the fact that you get a wire here that you don't want to break. There's very small wires inside there that are somewhat fragile. So as you spin it down, you want to make sure that you keep allowing the wire to spin with the sensor. Now we've hit the point where I'm unable to turn the sensor without the assistance of a wrench. As 
be very gentle in the stages. We want to make sure that when we get down inside the end of the threads, we don't hit the flywheel so hard that we damage the sensor. And periodically, you want to make sure that you're checking to make sure that you don't wind up the wires too much. The temptation might have it to spin this really quickly as you're turning it down. Remember, eventually you are going to bottom out into the flywheel. Now I'm bottomed out on the flywheel, and I'm going to back this sensor out one full turn. And the goal here is to make sure the sensor is far enough away from the flywheel that it doesn't hit when there's a little bit of run out the flywheel, but yet close enough to create a large enough signal for the engine to actually run. I'm going to loosen the bottom lock nut. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spin the two nuts away from each other, bringing the one on the top up and the one on the bottom down. And bring it down to the surface. And what I'm going to do is just put about a, just a little bit, maybe a quarter turn on the lock nut in the bottom so she's sensed up tight. I'll bring the top nut down. We're just going to gently jam those two nuts together so that the sensor doesn't spin. Looks like she's tight. Our sensor's installed. It's locked down. It's one turn away from the flywheel. You see this here is your locking tab. You want to get your locking tab engaged to the same side as the clip. So we're going to find the side with the locking tab. Engage the two components together. Snap them together. And the RPM sensor is now installed. 